Have you ever wanted to sort a list in Scratch? Maybe you want to sort a list of names. Or you're developing something more complex, like a 3D engine, and you need to sort by the distance to the camera. But if you head over to the lists blocks, you'll see that there is no sort list block. That means that you have to sort the list manually. To make things even worse, sorting lists can be a complex topic not only in Scratch, but in the realm of computer science. This is actually one of my first times researching sorting algorithms in computer science. But in today's video, I'll be showing you two different methods for sorting your lists in Scratch, and I'll walk you through each of them step by step. So without further ado, let's get started with Bubble Sort, a sorting algorithm that is really easy to make. The only downside though, is that it can be really slow, as you'll see in a second. Now, how does Bubble Sort work? Bubble Sort starts by taking a list, and then starts with the first two numbers. If they're in the wrong order, then we swap the two numbers. Then, we go ahead to the next two numbers, and do the same thing. Then the next two numbers, swap if they're in the wrong order, and you keep on going. Once you've done that once, you need to go ahead to the start of the list, and do it again, and again, and again. If you do it enough times, the list will be fully sorted. It turns out the max number of times you need to do this is equivalent to the length of the list. So let's go ahead and make it. First of all, I need to make a sample list to sort. Next, let's create a new custom my block called bubble sort. Don't forget to tick the run without screen refresh or else sorting will be very slow. Next, drag out a repeat block, and we'll repeat the length of the list. Then, let's create a new variable called item index. Then, set item index to 1. Then, drag out another repeat block, drag out a minus block. Then, let's grab length of the list, and subtract it by 1. Next, drag out an if block, then a greater than block. We're going to check to see if a value in the list is larger than the next item in the list. If it is, then we need to swap the two. Drag out the item 1 block, then item index. Make sure your list is selected here, and then we'll duplicate it. Drag out a plus block, put item index into here, set this to 1, and drag it back in. Then let's swap the two values. Go ahead and drag out an insert block, then duplicate this, and then duplicate the item index plus 1, and set this to 2. Then we need to delete item index of the list. Finally, let's change the item index by 1. Now let's give this a try. Hit the green flag, and it works! Now bubble sort is great because it's simple, but it can be very slow. Let me show you with an example script. This script will generate 100 random numbers, then use bubble sort, and then see how long it took. If we press the green flag, it actually goes pretty quick, but let's change this 100 to 1000 and press the green flag. Suddenly, this sorting algorithm went to 3 seconds, and the one without screen refresh couldn't keep up. If you go with 3000, then it's really slow. Now I can go advance the wash while I record on this video. Hang on. Oh look, it's done already. 29 seconds, wow. That is a lot. Oh, even the camera. Okay, the camera blur is broken. Hello. Okay. Okay. There we go. No. Okay. There we go. It's working. It's working. Now, you may be able to sacrifice 30 seconds, but if you're developing a 3D game, for example, you need this to run every frame. And instead of your game running at 30 frames per second, your game will be running at 30 seconds per frame. But before I show you probably one of the fastest methods, I want to show you an improved bubble sort algorithm. You see, halfway through, if our list is already sorted, we're actually going to continue to try to sort the list. Instead, we can actually stop sorting the list once we know our list is already sorted. And how do we know if our list is already sorted? Well, if we go through all the numbers and we don't make any swaps, then we know our list is sorted. So let's go ahead and add that to our bubble sort algorithm. Let's create a new custom block called bubble sort improved. Then let's duplicate our current code. Now we need to create a new variable called made swap. And we'll set it to zero here. Then if we ever make a swap, let's set it to one. Finally, let's stop the script if made swap is set to zero at the end of all the swaps. Now let's drag this in and give it a go. Of course, the real test comes down to speed, so let's give it a go. 
and improving this bubble sort algorithm didn't actually seem to do much. We're still stuck at 29 seconds. We need a fast algorithm, and the fast algorithm I will be showing you is called merge sort. You see, our current algorithms operate at what's known as n squared speed. Basically, this means if you took the elements in the list and then squared it, that will be the number of times this script is run. This is fine for small numbers, but it will take way too long for larger numbers. This is where a special sorting algorithm comes in called merge sort. This is the one I chose out of a few because I found it to be pretty simple to put in the scratch, although it still is a little complex. This sorting algorithm operates at n log n speed. Now I won't go too much into detail about log and whatever that is, but here's a graph of it. And as you can see, it's much faster than n squared. The way merge sort works is that we start with the entire list. Then we break the list into half. Then each of those lists are broken into half, and then so on and so forth. Then we sort each individual list, which in this case you really can't sort each individual list because they're each one element long. But then we combine those lists and then sort each of those lists, combine them and then sort them, and then combine them and sort them. When you do this method, the sorting will take place in a way where whenever you add a value to the list, it will either be the lowest value of one list or the lowest value of another list. Now, after this brief view, merge sort still looks very complicated. So let's go over another example, this time more in depth. First, we need to separate the list in half, then do merge sort again on each of those halves. Now, how do you do this through Scratch? Well, we can use a trick known as recursion, where you put the block inside the block definition. Yeah, this just made the explanation a little more complicated. So you know how you never want to use the term inside of definition in grammar class? Well, it turns out you can do that in Scratch. Of course, if you just drag out the definition like this, you're just gonna end up looping this code forever. However, if you do it correctly, such as adding a case where the block is stopped, you can actually do pretty cool things with recursion. Now, let's go back to the explanation. So we called merge sort on these lists, which means that these lists will be broken up as well. Now, in this case, they are lists with three elements, and even though the lists won't be even, we can still break them up. Then once merge sort is run on each list, we then go ahead and sort each list, which in this case, each list is already sorted since there is only one element per list. Next, we combine each group of lists and sort those, and so on. Now, let's stop here, because you are probably wondering how do we sort these lists, like do you use bubble sort for example? Well, it's important to remember that we've already sorted these two lists, and now we just need to sort the list when they are combined. Now, since these two lists are already sorted, when we add an element to this list, it will either be the lowest element of one list or the lowest element of another list. If it wasn't the lowest element, such as two for example, then it would come before one, which would mess up the entire list. So let's walk through sorting this step by step. One is less than eight, so one comes first. Two is less than eight, so two is next. Finally, eight is added to the end of the list. Now for the other list. Three comes before four, four comes before six, and then six is added to the end. Finally, let's sort the entire list. One comes before three, two comes before three, three comes before eight, four comes before eight, six comes before eight, and then eight is added to the end. As you can see, this is very complicated, so don't worry if you don't completely understand how merge sort works. What's important is that we get it into Scratch. With that said, let's go ahead and make the my block. Let's create a new my block called merge sort with two inputs, start and end. Now, if we're only sorting one value, we don't need to sort anymore because you can't sort one value. This will only take place if start and end are the same value. Next, let's set the middle of the list by averaging start and end, and then we should take the floor of that, so that way we're not left with a decimal. Then let's merge sort again, from the start of the list to the middle of the list. This will override the value of middle, so let's duplicate it, and then merge sort from middle plus one to the end. This will override the value of middle again, so let's duplicate middle. Next, let's set two variables, left index, which represents the left of the list, and right index, which represents the right of the list. 
left index will be set to the start and right index to the middle plus one. Next, we need to repeat until the left index has reached the end of the list, or if the right index is ever greater than the end of the list. Next, we need to check if the right index of the list is less than the left index of the list. If so, let's insert the right index item at the left index. Then we can change the right index by one. Then let's delete right index of the list. Then let's change left index by one. Now in the else case, let's just change the left index by one. And we're done. Whew, that was a lot. So let's go ahead and give it a try. Now, if you ever want to sort the entire list, set this to one and then drag out the length block like this and press green flag. The list is sorted. That was long, but we made it through it and we were able to sort the entire list in a fast format. Just for fun, let's give this a speed test. And wow, with 3000 elements, which took the previous algorithms 30 seconds to sort, it only took 0.3 seconds. This is extremely fast. Anyway, these are just three algorithms out of like hundreds of sorting algorithms that are out there. If you want to learn more about sorting, I recommend taking a look at the Scratch Wiki. By the way, thanks to the Scratch Wiki for help with the merge sort algorithm. My previous merge sort algorithm was a lot longer and more complicated than how the Scratch Wiki did it, so thanks again. Now thank you for watching this video, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of you who know way more about sorting than I do, so if you have any tips, want me to do a different sort algorithm, want me to do this whole video again, please let me know down in the comments. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know down in the comments as well. Thanks, have a great day, God bless. And this background is fake. <laughs>